Up next, we travel to Dedham, Massachusetts, where a young high school Boy Scout, John Williams, working on an Eagle Scout project, realized the Virgin Mary statue he had been refurbishing had been lost for over 60 years. It was a statue dedicated to a three-year-old girl who had been run over by an ice truck in the mid-1930s. A message was put out through the parish for anyone who knew the family of this little girl. And Don O'Neill, a member of the parish who was just six years old at the time of his sister's death, was contacted and told that the family statue of Mary, dedicated to his sister, had not only been found, but was being refurbished by John Williams. Let's take a look. So Father Kelly, who was the head priest at the time, he knew that I was looking for an Eagle Scout project. And so he told me that he had this statue that if I wanted to... Uh, do uh, Marion Grotto for it than I could. And Marion Grotto, it's kind of like, they're more like caves, but he knew that obviously I didn't have like the architectural skills to do that. Originally what happened was I just thought it would be, we'd take the statue and it would just be something like, like it is now basically. But I, I didn't think I would be uh, repainting it or rebuilding any parts of the statue. But what ended up happening was who was ever supposed to do that, uh, like for whatever reason, it just kind of like fell through. So Father Kelly emailed me and told me like, hey, like you, you need to do the painting and uh, the rebuilding of the statue as well too. So that added some work to it, but that ended up being like one of the best things to happen because because of the painting, one day my father and I noticed that the plaque's on the back now, but there was a plaque on the front and uh, it had a name and a birth date and a death date and we couldn't really read it. And so we got it cleaned up a little bit and we, we were able to get the name Joan O'Neill we were able to see it on the uh, the nameplate. So in the church bulletin, we posted a little blurb saying, hey, we, uh, we have this statue, then it's dedicated to Joan O'Neill. Here's the birth date and the death date. And within a few hours, I heard from Don's son and uh, by email. And he said, hey, like that's my father's sister. We were at the 11 o'clock mass and we had the bulletin and my wife hadn't read it in church, we were waiting till we get home. Then when we got home, we opened up the bulletin and there was a notice in the bulletin, the fact that if any family member of Jones was still in the parish, if they would contact John. And uh, we did that immediately that day. It was, it was really like surreal in a way. Like the statue, rebuilding it, like rebuilding the hands, repainting it, that took a lot of work and then by itself and then like having to know that okay I actually like helped out a family like that just made the like the work like that much better like okay like I didn't just rebuild a statue like I like rebuilt a family like in a way I guess. Also the fact that it was dedicated to, dedicated to somebody like before that it was like okay like I got to make sure this looks good like for my own sake but now it was okay like there's somebody's name on this like it's kind of like part of them too. My friend and my cousin helped me paint it and my mom and I did the, uh, the fingers on it, but I had had no prior experience doing any of this before. Yeah, Joan was born in 1933. The accident happened in 1936, August of 1936. Um, an ice truck, as I told you, he used to deliver the ice and we were as kids, we'd always go to the ice truck to get a piece of ice on a hot August day. Right. And uh, came out of delivering it, backed up, knocked her over and ran over and that's the sad part of the story. She didn't live, but uh, <clears throat> that was the reason why my father and mother decided they would like to donate a statue to the school in her memory. And so we did that and uh, that's the, the last time I saw it is when I was in the seventh grade of St. Mary's that used to be in that classroom. I have all the paperwork turned in, so since it's before my 18th birthday, I'm fine. So they could get back to me like a year from now and I'd be fine. I could become an Eagle Scout. So I just need to wait till the council uh, gets like the logistics together. They might do a bunch of kids at once and then uh, I'll he they'll give me like two weeks notice and then I can uh, hopefully pass like the final board of review for my Eagle Scout project. But yeah, all the, all the hard work's done. I just originally thought that it would be more of like a service of works, I guess, like physical work. But uh, it turned out to be like, I guess, a source of healing, definitely for Dawn. 
and for his family because they had been searching for the statue for like decades and it, uh, it felt really really uh, good to like actually be able to uh, like give them this after all these years. He said he had given up on it and I would have too if I was in his shoes and it's kind of funny that uh, it just randomly showed up like when he had given up like it's kind of ironic but I think it showed up for a reason at the time that it did and it felt it felt nice to uh, provide some sort of happiness and I guess peace to him and his family. My impressions of myself, my wife and the rest of my family it, it's, it's outstanding it, it's amazing. I did not see the statue before John had done all this work on it and he has done, I think, God bless him, an outstanding job on it. Couldn't ask for a better young man, yeah. I really can um, express how pleased I am. I mean, I, I, the only thing I dislike, it just brings back lousy memories because uh, I was holding her hand when she got hit. And, but uh, that's a wonderful job. Great work by John, who is on his way to getting a well-deserved Eagle Scout rank. And it's so nice having the statue of Mary back on display at the parish of St. Mary of the Assumption.